Hi, this is Attorney Mike Irvin coming to you from Chicago as usual, and I've gotten into some crazy stuff lately. Um, but today we're going to do another one on quantum grammar with a guy named Leighton Ward. We're going to call this one Leighton Ward, Sovereign Citizen. Let's do it. From the secret headquarters of the Sovereign Citizen Patrol, initiating video production sequence. We are no longer playing. So let's get revved up. It's time for Law Talk with Mike. David Funkhauser. David Funkhauser. Yes, David, this is Leighton. How are you? I'm doing well, Leighton. How are you? Good. I want to wait a couple minutes to see if we can get anybody else on the line. Julia Kessner is here. All right, got David and Julia. I'm still waiting a couple of minutes so we can get anybody else on the line. I'm going to put and the call. Is this, being, is this being recorded? Oh, yeah, definitely. All right, can we get a transcript of the recording when we're done? I'm um, sure. David, I'm recording on my end also. Okay, do you understand that, Layton, that we're recording it as well? Absolutely. Okay, so this phone call is, is pretty fun. It's, uh, it's Layton Ward talking to an attorney and it's it's kind of interesting because usually the attorney handles it pretty well so he says a lot of things that i would say <laughs> i feel like i'm taking the day off here but uh it's it's interesting to see uh quantum grammar in action before we get started are you or the court being represented at this time i don't understand your question are you being represented by a lawyer a real lawyer no okay I'm going to go ahead and put myself on mute just for a couple of minutes. I want to see if anybody else is up on the call. So we're going to get started. Let's see if anybody chimes in, we can find out who chimes in. Uh, first thing I want to go over is um, you guys, um, when you're writing a lawsuit or the stuff you guys are writing, are you, do you under, actually understand the parts of speech and the stuff you write? Yes, Layton. I went to law school. I understand how to write. And, and okay, so sentences. then you can explain when you write a lawsuit, can you explain why when you write it, there's, you write it in such a manner that there's no facts written within the... Uh, this is minor, but like just right off the bat, you don't write a lawsuit. You draft a complaint. Uh, that's pretty universal. In the, 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 that's the way that most people would phrase that. And it, it's it's small, but it just shows... It's your first inkling that, that we're all, you know, off kilter here. Entire lawsuit. You, are you familiar with that? I'm familiar with your position on it, Leighton, that, that we don't know how to properly form a sentence or a sentence structure, but that's not what this case is about. And really all we're doing here is to try and have a meet and confer with you all about the lawsuit we filed, which you've now been served on. In the the, the, this is fun. Uh, you get to see one of these guys crash straight into an actual attorney, and the guy is pretty sharp. Not only is he sharp, but he didn't get caught uh, flat-footed here. He's aware of this uh, quantum grammar nonsense, so he knows exactly what he's dealing with. Federal United States District Court for Arizona, which is a real court. Do you understand that? <laughs> uh, no, I don't understand that, because what you do when you write the lawsuit and everything you've written since day one of law school is written in such a manner to create no facts whatsoever. You guys use adjectives, adverbs, verbs, and everything else but a fact. That's what you guys do. You, you write in such a manner to create no facts whatsoever. And then you go to a fiction court, the district court, and write the same stuff, just with the same judges. And then you guys go online, poke around, see if you can find some opinions online that justify your opinion and try to make a fact out of it. So, uh, All of this is, of course, complete nonsense. And what's amazing is it's prevalent. I, I just did a video on it. I got another one coming up. Uh, and and we'll see. But the attorney here handles it well. When you guys write something, I've already sent checks that everything you've written to date has been 100% fraudulent. Mathematically, I can prove it. Well, you that, guys got served from amazing. us just that the same. Is, that, well, okay, are you done? Let well, it sounds amazing. Uh, it sounds amazing is that you guys write documents, but you don't know how to write a fact. That's amazing to me. Leighton, what are you possibly basing that on? Where did you get your education? <laughs> what are you basing this on? Because everything we've filed has been consistent with what our previous filings in, in court, including the United States District Court for the District of Arizona, which is an Article Three court under the Constitution of the United States. That is a real court. Your court is not. <laughs> well, that's your opinion of it. I don't know exactly what he means by uh, his court, but I imagine it's similar to the Russell J. Gould uh, Federal Postal Court. I, I'll, I'll put a link to that in the description below. It's the same. It's the same concept. But ooh, is it not a real court? 
doing again your stating opinions. You don't know how to state a fact. And that's something you guys have never been trained to do. You think you're correct, and you think you're stating facts, but you say nothing but opinions, just like every single document you've ever written. And that's why I asked you guys to complete the, the charity project on the advocacy for consumer rights. It's a real simple project. You simply write a, a one over every adverb, a two over a verb, and so forth and so on. And I haven't seen you guys complete that project. That would let me know that you guys actually know what a fact is. At this, uh, You could ask us to do all sorts of other crazy things that we're not going to participate in, too. <laughs> We've got a life to lead and a practice to, to carry on with. Point in time, everything you've done, even when you file documents in the county, every time you file a document in the county, you do it in such a manner that the document contains nothing. It's just a bunch of opinions. So you guys are trying to go out. No, he does it in such a manner that it complies with the, the court rules and it, and it is to be understood and might actually get his client um, closer to their goal. After us for putting a correct document, I filed a lawsuit against Flagstar for fraudulent grammar. They didn't do anything about it. They just ignored it. Therefore, we won by default. And therefore, I went and filed a correct judgment based on a correct lawsuit. That's exactly what happened. Into the mouth. Oh. Nice. Of course. Fraudulent grammar. This is actually the second time I've heard the phrase the court, where, where he claims to have a default judgment. I don't know. I, I'm guessing that's one of his made up courts <laughs> in unicorn land. Of course, they ignored it, Leighton, because it's not a real thing. You, you send us a bunch of weird stuff and that nobody follows, that you've never provided anybody besides you and the judge of your fictional court are the only ones that write like this and you think you have a basis for a lawsuit and you don't. And I'm telling you, and this is the reason for the lawsuit that we filed against you, you have, you have issued a false judgment and you have also issued a judgment or a writ that's been affected by Mr. Bullmore's uh, property. He called us the other day, was very... Uh, sympathetic for getting our our client into this, and he has now recorded a release of those same uh, silly documents. He's still probably going to be on the hook for our attorney's fees and costs, and I told him that. So even if we get this resolved with Mr. Bullmiller, that doesn't get us resolved with you and the alleged federal postal court. So that's the purpose of this conversation, is to decide whether we can come to some resolution here or if we're going to have to litigate this matter in, again, a real court, the federal district court. The United States. Can you identify the parts of speech in the words you just said? <laughs> no, I'm not. Leighton, I don't. Why would I do that? I know how to write. I went to seven years of college. Did you go to seven years of college? I don't need to go to seven years of college to learn something you don't know how to write to begin with. Like I said, when you're speaking right now, every single word coming out of your mouth, there are no facts in anything you say. It's simply opinions. You're using adjectives and adverbs to modify every single word that normally would have been a fact, just like what you do in your writings. Like, that's the challenge the same you, thing. We're having, we're having a conversation. What you're saying back to me is the exact same language. We are all right, speaking. But English. I can identify the parts of speech and the things I do. I can syntax everything you're saying. What right now, you don't know what you're talking about. You don't know the parts of speech. You can't even, in your own words, your own writings, anything you write, you can't identify a verb for a fact. You don't know an adjective. Wow. I mean, this is just so hard to stomach. First of all, uh, you, you know, th th their theory makes no sense. And then they just they just say, OK, well, we're going to split all this up. And then they just assign random thing meaning to that. It, it doesn't mean anything and no one else understands it. <laughs> but for some reason, th this is caught on and, and you hear echoes of this nonsense throughout the sovereign citizen community. You don't know a pronoun. You just write. Whatever comes to your head, you write down and you think it's factual because you put on a piece of paper. When you say the house or the property, the becomes an adverb modifying property to become a, a, a verb. There's no such thing as a verb property. And this is what you guys do. You write lawsuits in such a way, and same with the deed of trust, it's written in such a manner to ensure anything that was going to be a fact is modified to now become a verb, an adjective, a pronoun, um, or other parts of speech, but certainly not a fact. And you and I can go back all this on day long, but the proof is, you don't know what you're writing. You think you do, but you really don't. Um, I think he does. <laughs> I bet if I read his complaint, I would know exactly what he was saying. How Funny how that is. Yet if you wrote it your way, nobody uh, would understand what you're saying. Don't forget to hit like. The boys would really appreciate it. Unless you have something against Frankie and Ali. We, we, I'm sure we could do, go all day long, uh, later than, like the Federal Postal Service, which is a real thing. You guys apparently hold court on sundown on a Saturday. We do not. We're not working. I'm taking time out of my day and my fa away from my family to call in to have this conversation with you because the court will eventually require that we have a, what's called a meet and confer about our lawsuit. So that's what I'm trying to do. 
are you willing to do uh, what we've asked for in the complaint, which is to release, uh, execute a recorded release of both the writ that you issued and the judgment for $10 million plus that you issued against our client. Are you willing to do that? Um, are you willing to complete the charity project and prove you know the parts of speech in the words you're writing? No, Leighton, I have other things to do. I have other clients, and I'm not even going to get – I mean, has anybody ever agreed with you besides the uh, judge of your alleged court? Who has actually agreed with you? A third-party objective agreement on what you guys are doing. It goes back to the point. Are you willing to complete the charity project and write out the parts of speech in your own lawsuit even? Uh, asked and answered. You asked this question, and he said no. Nicer than he should have, but he did, in fact, say no. Can you, can no, you identify the part already, in your own already set out. No, it's set out. The judge has not taken issue with our pleadings. He's going to take an issue, I think, with the answer you filed because it's not an answer. Oh, yeah. So he's either the judge is... <laughs> it wasn't an answer. I sued you guys for fraudulent grammar. That's what happened. So you got 48 yeah, days to respond back to that. You've sent us something from your silly court that we're not going to respond to, and the judge's order yesterday said we don't have to do that. He wouldn't even get on to participate in this court because you've sued him as well. Isn't that correct? Judge exactly Stephen right. Levin, a United States District Court you've also, judge you've also sued? Call on the law so you guys can read it. Well, I, I don't know if you guys can actually read it because I don't like you guys can read a fact. No, I can't read it because it's a bunch of gibberish crap, and I'm not <laughs> going to take time to read it. I'm not going to take time to read something that doesn't make any sense, and nor is the court. And now that you've sued or tried to sue a United States District Court judge, I think that's going to have very bad ramifications for you, Leighton. So I would give again, you a second. Again, you got that. opinions. So it goes back to the point. Um, if you guys can complete the charity project, that proves to me you guys have some sort of idea what you're actually talking about. But at this point, it doesn't sound like you want to compete that or do anything in that matter when it comes to grammar. You assume you're going to be correct on everything, but it goes back to the point where you guys don't know what you're actually writing, and you've never known what you're I, I assume he's going to be correct on everything, too. <laughs> just just my gut. You're writing. You just write whatever you feel like, and you think it becomes a fact because you put it on a piece of paper. So that, that goes down to it. It all goes down to grammar. What, what? Oh, Lord, it all goes down to grammar. No, it doesn't. Uh, grammar's in there. To the extent that we're talking about grammar, what these people are suggesting is completely wrong, absurd, and doesn't follow any rules or make any sense. But it, it really does get down. Ultimately, in these cases, I've been litigating for almost 25 years now. It really gets down to the facts and the, and the law, I, it, it, as it should. That, that's how it works. What charity? What, why do you say it's a charity? What kind of charity are you running? It's called I'm the charity involved in charities, Layton. Real charities, 501c3 organizations. Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> you can tell the information I already gave it to you, so you can, whether you took the time to study or not, I don't know. I did not, and like I said, I'm not going to. So okay. uh, it sounds like we're at an impasse here. You, you're not going to agree to do the requested, the items we requested in our lawsuit, and we're not going to do your quote-unquote charity I'm not. Project. I'm not going to release. If Jeff B. Miller wants to record a release, that's his own business. I'm not going to record a release of the documents filed in the county are 100% correct. Mathematically, they're 100% correct. So if he wants to do that, that's on his own. You can do that. That's his choice. I'm not going to release the judgment. That's his choice. Well, I, I can tell you as, a, as an attorney and, again, a guy who studied a lot of math, you, you, you don't make um, judgments regarding sentence structure via mathematics. But that's insane. <laughs> But I did get questions and comments based on uh, Russell Gold uh, video. People ask, well, what is this? What they do is, is they come up with this stuff and they say, oh, you owe us uh, a fake judgment or whatever. But they record it in a real scenario, in, in, in an actual government office. So then when someone tries to sell their property or whatever, they, they can't get clear title because there's just, and there, it's a complete nonsense and there's no basis for it. But it's, it's incredibly problematic for, for a person to just have all this junk to clear up. You, you have to, to pay attorneys to clear these things out and, and get clean title because you want to sell your house, which has a, a nonsense $10 million judgment against it from postal court. I, I, he's already agreed to do that, and we're checking with the title company to see if that's effective. And if it is, we'll probably resolve this with Mr. Bulmer. But if it's not, and if they say we need something from you or the court, your your, your fake court, we're going to come back or we're going to get the court to compel that so we can record that as well so that there's no when longer you, When you just said fake court, what part of speech was court? Do you know what part of speech court was when you just said that? <laughs> A real court. Lately. A real court. What is Okay, what is real court? What part of speech is that? There's two words. What, what part of speech is it? 
uh, how is it any different than the, you just repeated it back to me? You're saying the exact <laughs> no, because, same thing. We're no, having a what I'm telling you right now is I understand what I'm talking about. I have to communicate in a language you understand, which is fiction, but I'm asking you, do you know what the words real court is? Can you identify, is it an adjective, a pronoun, a verb? What, what those two words are they? Do you know what they are? I, I don't know. It's okay. referring to an actual thing that exists, a court, a real court, the United States <laughs> real court. court, which is a when court. When you say the word real or court. Mojave County Court, also a real court. Your court is not a real court. It's a fake court, and it's a bunch of silliness, and you know it. A fake court. So a fake court would be an adjective pronoun. Again, what you're doing is every single word. And again, I can talk to you in fiction because I'm trying to communicate with you, but uh, you're, that's a thing, kind of sort of a bypass because you're not willing to admit to the fact that you don't know what you're actually talking about and certainly don't know what you're writing. Everything you write is in a manner to create no facts whatsoever. It's just opinions. And then what you guys do is you take a, you cite other cases. So you'll go to another judge or you try to get other opinions of other judges and try to make them look like facts. You can have a hundred opinions. They don't end up being anything other than just one more opinion. See that? And that's, yeah, and they're legal opinions. Legal opinion. In real courts. They're, it's legal. You know, what, so you know what the word opinion means? Our United States judicial system works. You know what the word opinion means? I, well, here, do me a favor, Liam, because I'm not going to do this all day. Why don't you, well, yeah, you, you can. talk in the way – how, how, give me a sentence of how you think it – tell me something in a sentence form of how you think it's structurally correct, just for my own I just I wrote it all to you, so remember you said you weren't going to look at that. So if you want to take the time to read it, yeah. it's all there. I, Mathematically, it's it. I'm asking yeah. you because you're asking me. I'm asking you questions, and you're asking how, what's between the and court. How would you phrase a sentence? I'm just curious. Well, you do a five, six, seven position lodial fact will be for the court. Oh no! That's the only way you come, arrive at a fact. When you say the court, the becomes adverb, modifying court to now become a verb. You're making a court to be. There's no such thing as a verb court. See, that's what happens when you write your lawsuits. When you write anything, you write it to create everything that would have been a fact. You guys modify it to be verbs, adjectives, pronouns, um, or everything else but a fact. And that's that's unfortunate because you guys you really do believe that you're correct. Uh, that that was actually interesting. He's he's trying to get over this. He actually has a, an obligation. He says it earlier in the, in the federal rules of civil procedure. You really do. You have to uh, have the, you have to have this meeting and try to work things out. He has the, he's determined they can't they can't work it out. But it, it was fascinating to me that the attorney actually asked him to say it verbally to him, and he can't do it. He can't do it. I mean, like, if, you know, if he just came up with any nonsense and said, well, that's the way it should be, I, I would have had more respect for it. But no, he can't. Dodges everything. But you're not. And it's not fun to admit to it. And I get that's why you're not going to. But bottom line is I know mathematically I'm correct on this stuff. And so when I write a lawsuit to you guys, when I write a lawsuit to was it Judge Stephen Logan, I'm writing it to be 100% correct because the documents coming from you guys have been modified to such a fashion to ensure there's no facts whatsoever. And you guys continue to do this over and over and over, and you write anything you feel like and assume it's a fact. Just because other people recognize it doesn't mean it's a fact. It's still fraud. That's Title 18, Section 1001, and Title 15, Section 1692E for false and misleading statements. I assure you, any any uh, code provision that he cites is not written in uh, quantum grammar. So I, I don't know why he thinks that all of a sudden has, has some vested authority. Okay. We're obviously going to have to agree to disagree on that. 100%. On, on who's right and who's wrong here. I'm humble enough to know that sometimes I'm wrong, but I'm not going to be wrong on this. We are going to. <laughs> this is not going to end. Brother, you're not wrong here. <laughs> you got it. It's not going to end well for you. Again, if you can't maintain having Judge Logan in this case, I don't think that's going to work out well for you. And let me put you on notice. If you try and do anything with this lawsuit, quote unquote lawsuit against me or, or worse, my associate, uh, Julia, who's on this, if you try and execute or record any writs or judgments there or here, that's not going to go well because I'm going to move immediately to have those invalidated under 33420, which is a real statute in the state in which we live on, and I will get actual and statutory damages against you guys. And we will then send out the Mojave County Sheriff's Department, who's a real group and a real sheriff, <laughs> to put a writ on everything you guys have out there, including your court, your eagle symbol, whatever we can, and we're going to sell it. And that's how it's going to end. So let me be clear. If you take any action to record any fraudulent documents against me or any member of my firm, that's going to go poorly for you. Do you understand that? I can tell you this. I'm going to do exactly what's correct 100% of the time. I'm not going to be threatened by you in any way, shape, or form. I'm going to do it correct all the time. If you guys are going to continue on fraud, I'll continue being correct until it's fixed. Do you understand that? I understand, Layton. Okay. Did you hear me? Did you hear what I said? 
Can you do any of this silliness? Can you record anything here? We're going to pursue that to the ends of the earth on a real court. And the real courts are even going to take down you and your silly court. I think this is going to end badly for you. I think Judge you Logan think and the marshals to take you, to, to arrest you, and to put your court, whatever you guys, your transient jurisdiction court, if it's an advance and whatever crazy stuff you're doing out there, <laughs> it's all going to end. So right. if you want to keep doing this and fictionalize it and have fun and dames on Saturday afternoon with you and your judge uh, and record things and tell everybody how wrong and silly they are, that's fine. But if you take the next step and you record something against us, that's going to be in poorly for you. That's all I want to say. I'm not going to spend any more time on the phone with you today. I'm not working today. I'm spending time with my family. Julia's got better things to do. So we're ending this conversation. We've, we've tried to resolve this with you. We've tried to meet and confer on this. And you're not willing to agree to what we're asking you to do. So yeah, I'm going to be continue being correct. That's all. You do that. Have a good day. Layton, we'll talk to you. We'll see you in court soon. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. Well, there you have it. Layton Ward and his crazy uh, quantum grammar. He, of course, does end up being uh, convicted of uh, multiple felonies. It was it was mortgage stuff mostly. It sounds a lot like Anthony Williams. I, I'll put a link to that in the description below. That's just uh, an article that I, I looked because I checked on where he went. I, I figured he was headed down that path based on this phone call. But if, and and of course he was. I don't I don't know if he's in prison right now or not. But it I, looks like he was convicted of multiple felonies for saying that mortgages were fraudulent and you don't have to pay them. Of course, taking people's money to tell them this nonsense and then, you know, making up uh, his fake court proceedings and, and claiming those would help. Here at Law Talk, we like to have fun with uh, silly stuff that happens in court and every once in a while and completely by accident, I assure you, you might learn something. Thanks for watching.